Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through psoriatic arthritis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroDefinals.com slash psoriatic arthritis or in the rheumatology section of the Zero Definals medicine book. So let's jump straight in. Psoriatic arthritis is an inflammatory arthritis that's associated with psoriasis and it can vary in severity. So patients might have a mild stiffening and soreness in the joint or the joint can be completely destroyed in a condition called arthritis mutilans. It occurs in about 10 to 20% of patients who have psoriasis, the skin condition which causes rashes and scaly patches to occur on places like the elbows or on the scalp. And usually it occurs within about 10 years of developing the skin changes. So if you've had the skin changes for more than 10 years and they haven't developed psoriatic arthritis, then it's unlikely to develop after 10 years. It typically affects people in middle age, but it can occur at any age. It's part of the group of conditions called seronegative spondyloarthropathies. And these are seronegative inflammatory arthritis like reactive arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and enteropathic arthritis. There's a few patterns of the condition. And it doesn't really affect a single pattern of joints in the same way that you find osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis affect specific joints. There's several recognised patterns of psoriatic arthritis. One of those patterns is a symmetrical polyarthritis that presents similarly to rheumatoid and is more common in women. And this affects the hands, the wrists, the ankles and the distal interphalangeal joints of the fingers. The MCP joints, or the knuckles, are less commonly affected, unlike in rheumatoid arthritis. Another classic pattern of psoriatic arthritis is an asymmetrical porky arthritis. And remember, porky arthritis is where they only affect a few joints. And this pattern typically affects the digits, so the fingers and the toes, and also the joints of the feet. And a final typical pattern of psoriatic arthritis is a spondylitic pattern and this is more common in men and it presents with back stiffness, sacroiliitis and atlantoaxial joint involvements at the top of the neck. Other areas that can be affected are the spine, the Achilles tendon and the plantar fascia. So what signs would you have of psoriatic arthritis? Well, firstly, have a look at the skin and see if there's any plaques of psoriasis on the skin. Another sign is pitting of the nails. And these are tiny pinprick-like pits that occur on the fingernails. Another sign is onycholysis, which is a separation of the nail from the nail bed. Dactylitis is a classical sign of psoriatic arthritis. And dactylitis is where you have inflammation of the full finger. So that might be the full finger or the full toe. And finally, an associated sign is enthesitis. And this is inflammation of the entheses. And remember, the entheses are the points at which tendons insert into bones. So it's that join between the tendons and the bones that gets inflamed and becomes sore. There's a few other associations with psoriatic arthritis. One of them is eye disease, and it causes conjunctivitis and anterior uveitis. Another one is aortitis. So this is inflammation of the aorta, or that big blood vessel that comes out of the heart and travels down through the chest and abdomen. And another association is amyloidosis, where you have amyloid deposits throughout the body. Something to remember for your exams is the psoriasis epidemiological screening tool, or the PEST. The NICE recommend that patients with psoriasis complete the PEST tool to screen for psoriatic arthritis. And this involves asking a number of questions about joint pain, swelling, a history of arthritis, and looking for signs of nail pitting. A high score usually triggers a referral to a rheumatologist. 
Let's talk about the x-ray changes you find in psoriatic arthritis. One is periostitis, and this is inflammation of the periosteum, which causes a thickened and an irregular outline of the bone. Remember that the periosteum is the coating of the bone. Another one is ankylosis, which is where the bones join together and cause joint stiffening because the bones are essentially fusing. Another is osteolysis, which is destruction of the bone. Another one is dactylitis, which is inflammation of the entire digit. And this will appear on an x-ray as soft tissue swelling of the entire finger or the entire toe. And another final classic x-ray change is a cup in pencil appearance. And this is where there's central erosions of the bone beside the joint. So this causes the appearance of one bone in the joint being hollow and looking like a cup, while the other bone is narrow and sits inside the cup, causing a pencil-in-cup appearance. There's a condition called arthritis mutilans, which you need to be aware of for your exams. And this is a specific severe form of psoriatic arthritis. And this occurs in the phalanxes, which are the bones inside the digits, or inside the fingers or the toes. And essentially what happens is there's osteolysis, which is destruction of the bones around the phalanxes, so either end of the phalanxes, which causes the digits to shrink or get shorter because the bones in the digit are getting shorter. And this causes the skin around the finger or the toe to fold in on itself as the bones inside it get shorter and closer together. And this gives an appearance which we often call a telescopic finger. So essentially the finger is getting shorter and the skin is folding in on itself like a telescope. So how do we manage psoriatic arthritis? Well, management is similar to rheumatoid arthritis and there's a crossover between the systemic treatments of psoriasis and the treatment of psoriatic arthritis. So treatment is often coordinated between dermatologists and rheumatologists because the treatment of one condition will help the other. Depending on the severity, the patient might just require simple non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications for pain. They might require DMARDs or disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs like methotrexate, leflunamide or sulfasalazine. They can be treated with anti-TNF medications like etanercept, infliximab or adalimumab. And the last line is erstakinumab, which is a monoclonal antibody that targets specifically interleukin-12 and interleukin-23. And by targeting these interleukins, it dampens down inflammation. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to follow the channel and find out as more videos come out. You can also find written notes with illustrations on the Zero to Finals website at zerodefinals.com. And on the website, you can also find a podcast that can help you learn on the go, questions to test your knowledge, and the Zero to Finals books. Follow the link in the description to pick up a copy of the Zero to Finals medicine book. It contains detailed and concise notes on 10 specialties in medicine, and it's designed specifically to contain the key facts and guidelines you need to know for your medical exams, with mnemonics and Tom tips to help you learn exactly what you need to know for your exams, without all the hassle. Follow the links to find out more.